name is Rachel, I'm the youth worker here at Swan Bank and you are watching the first in our YouTube series, How To Talk To God And Pray Like You Mean It. But first, we're going to play a game, so let's get cracking. Game one. Oh! <laughs> I'm still in my feet. <laughs> okay. Rachel one. Joel zero. Do it. Game two. <laughs> I just want to watch the side on purpose. Ah! <laughs> okay. Lovely. Whoop! The whole year went then. Rachel two, Joel zero. If I lose this one, I'm done. If I lose we'll do this, six. I'm done. We'll do all six. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Go again. Go again. <laughs> go again. Game three. Two. This is it, the final. The final. We can either draw or we'll have to lose. Ready? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Can't pick it up. <laughs> Three. Three, two, two one. one, go. <laughs> we drew! So Joel is here with me. Hello everybody. The first thing I want Joel to do before we get cracking on how to talk to God and pray like you mean it is answer me this really important question. Okay. The most important question of the whole video maybe. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. You haven't prepped me on this, but yes. Okay. If you had three wishes, what would they be? Go. Okay. I think the first one would be that I had an unlimited supply of Coke. So I could just get it out of the fridge and it would be there. The second one would be that I had the superpowers of Spider-Man. So I could just like swing around and things. And the third one would be that I had a lightsaber. I want a real life lightsaber. As you can tell, Joel is like the biggest nerd you'll ever meet. Yeah. And if you don't know me already, you'll learn this you'll, Over the next you'll very, weeks. very quickly. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're going to start our questions now to answer how to talk to God and pray like you mean it. Here's the first question. Here's the first question. That's a good question. Um, I think the reason we pray is not just about asking God for things and not just about going to God as a last resort, uh, but it needs to be about growing closer to God and growing closer in a relationship with him as well. Like what if you had a friend that came up to you um, only ever to ask for things? Mm. So, uh, hi, can I borrow your pencil case? Or can I have your phone? Mm. Or can you do this for me? That That's not a good friendship. 
So then flip it. If we're doing that to God, that's not really um, a good relationship that we should be having. Um, mm. How how would God feel about that? I don't. I wouldn't feel very good if I had a friend like that. And if you do have a friend like that, then maybe you should um, look at that a little bit. We need to pray like we mean it and have that two way conversation with God. Because mm. when we have that two way conversation with God, um, He hears us and He starts to heal things. you all have a phone don't you uh how often do you have to go without charging that phone i have to charge mine every day joel i charge mine twice a day twice a day exactly we can't last a day without it if we don't have our phones then we can't go on social media we can't talk to our friends we can't scroll through tiktok mindlessly all day every day way too much <laughs> if we don't connect to the power source and charge our phones then our phones die mm. uh, when we pray Jesus is our power source. We can't go a day without talking to him in the same way that we can't go a day without being on our phones. We need to be fed by Jesus and not fed by our news feeds. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that you've got to pray every single day. And that doesn't matter whether that's a big prayer, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes long, but it could be a small prayer, 30 seconds, five seconds, anything, just asking God, speaking to God uh, about anything. Um, because you should want to tell him about everything that's happened in your day or what's going on in your life. Yeah, he wants to hear about the whole thing. Yeah. Um, this is something quite difficult for me because I get distracted very easily. So... I find it difficult to find places to pray where I'm not just going to stop praying and look at some cars that are going, which I'm doing right now. Um, so picking somewhere that is private and quiet is often a really helpful thing, uh, particularly for me and I know for a lot of people. Prayer is very personal uh, and so picking somewhere that's going to help you um, speak to God better is, is very useful. Yeah, so we've got a few examples for you here. Um, so the most obvious one would be in your bedroom just before you go to sleep yeah. or just when you wake up in the morning the first thing you do instead of looking at your phone that could be one hmm. could be that you've got a crazy house and so the only place to get any peace and quiet is on the toilet hmm. and the i i do it in the shower i pray in the shower in the morning yeah and hmm. like i know how many of you don't lie how many of you sit and scroll through facebook while you're on the toilet disgusting do you do that joel you can't joel actually says he can't go to the toilet without his phone That's if my phone's not charged i can't go to the toilet <laughs> so on the toilet in the shower on the bus or on the walk to school whether you're walking the dog and it's just you and the dog and god or maybe if you are if you have a car and you can drive maybe on the drive mm. Wherever you go, just don't shut your eyes. Do not shut your eyes while you're driving. No, I don't want any crashes. <clears throat> no. Prayer is very different for everybody. Um, and I think there's no right way to pray. There's no, like, perfect way to pray. Perfect prayers don't exist. No, do they? they don't. I but I do think that there may be a wrong way to pray. Maybe we can pick that up on Zoom on Tuesday. Um, if you join us on Tuesday, we'll talk about that. Um, and actually, you don't need big, fancy words. You don't need really long prayers that last 15 minutes. Um, church can be really scary sometimes when people pray for a really long time. But actually, you don't need that. No, and sometimes you don't even need words. Mm. Um, so often, I've just not even had any words to say and I've just been so like despairing at the situation that I just need to go... Rah! And that can be enough. Mm. The Holy Spirit can translate that prayer for us. Yeah. Um, so we have five steps that might help you um, try and pr put into words what you want to say to God. So the first thing is just stop. Get rid of all those distractions around you. If you've got loads of things buzzing around in your head, ask God to take them away. Just spend a couple of um, seconds or minutes just letting everything get away and just fizzle out. 
So it's just yeah. you and God in this situation. Number two, say thank you. Even if you've had a really hard day, just find one little thing that you can be grateful yeah. for to God. Um, or if you've had an amazing day, just thank him for everything because mm. God is amazing. Number three, say sorry. Um, we can only pray when we turn away from our uh, wicked ways, mm. when we turn away from the things that we have done wrong. So we need to say sorry to God and ask for his forgiveness. Mm. Number four, now is a time to say please, to ask God for the things that you want help with. So that could be things mm. in your life, things in your friends or your family's life, or just things for the wider world. It's a time to be honest with God. Mm. And then finally, I think the most important one actually Probably. is to, number five, to wait. We can't come to God with this long list of prayers and then just walk away and expect him to deal mm. with it all. Prayer is about that two-way conversation again. So maybe he has something to say to you there and then. Maybe he has a word to put on your heart or a feeling that nudges you towards something mm. there and then. But... It's not always going to be a yes either, is it? No. And it's not always going to come straight away. You might have to wait a little while. And it might be a no. It might be actually that God says no to something, that it's maybe not the right time for that or that it's just not right for this moment. Yeah. God sees the bigger picture. Mm. Um, and so he wants to do what is best for you. Yeah. So if you believe in what you are praying for, believe that he will come through for you, um, then God is going to... God is going to do that. He hears your prayer and he will come through in some way or another. So we've said a lot of things in that video. So we just want to give you a summary, some final top tips to help you this week in your prayer lives. Number one, uh, pick a time and place to pray. And that'll really help you get into a routine and really help you in growing your relationship with God and learning how to get into conversation with him. Yeah. And we number two, we all focus in different ways. So uh, whatever helps you to focus, maybe it could be speaking your prayers out loud, uh, writing your prayers down in a prayer journal. Uh, maybe you're really creative and so spending some time colouring in or doing some artwork while you pray could be helpful for you. Or you could uh, sit and look at a candle or the birds in the sky, something to help you focus. Maybe it could be holding something in your hand, a Bible, a cross, a stone, just anything that helps you focus, channel that into your prayer life. Number three, never ever stop praying. Mm. Like we said before, um, our prayers aren't always answered straight away. You can still keep praying that same prayer over and over again until it is answered if you write down your prayers in a calendar or your notes, maybe you can look back later on and see that God will yeah. always answer your prayer, yeah. not necessarily in the way that you expected it. And number four, share your prayers with others. Um, tell other people about your prayers. Tell other people about how you've seen God work through your prayers, because that will really encourage you and really encourage others to carry on with their prayers and carry on with that relationship with God. Yes. So we want to end on a challenge for you guys. Over the next uh, week, we want you to set aside 60 seconds. That's it. One Is minute. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Done. Every day um, in the same place at the same time to pray with God. I think now we've talked about prayer so much, maybe we should end with on prayer. a prayer. That would make sense. <laughs> Dear Lord, we thank you so much for these opportunities to come together um, virtually via YouTube and Instagram and all the ways that we've used so far um, to get to know you. We're so excited for Tuesday for our Zooms where we can connect with each other one-on-one um, -on -one and just enjoy each other's company, Lord. I pray that you will bless us all this week and that we will each be able to take something away from these videos and from our Zoom on Tuesday that will help us get to know you better. Amen. Amen. We'll see everybody on Tuesday. Yep, see you on Tuesday at 7.30 on Zoom. Have a good week. Bye.